Hey folks, welcome to Operations on Radicals. We're going to start Operations on Radicals with a little bit of review of some of the stuff you saw last year. All right, so uh, section 5.1, Simplifying Radicals. Uh, we have a few things to look at here. First off, this is a radical over here. This is a radical. Okay. Radical. And there's a few key words here that we can use to describe the radical. This little number three, which is saying the cube root, whatever number is there, we call that the index. And this piece inside the radical, that is called the radicand. Okay, so let's talk about restrictions on radical variables. So, for a radical with an even index, the radicand must be non-negative. This means it could be zero or it could be positive. So here's, here's two examples for you. The square root of 15, that's a real number that exists. But the square root of negative 4, that's not real. There's no real number called the square root of negative 4. So the, the radicand must be non-negative. So let's consider 3 minus x, or the root of 3 minus x. Well, the only way that this is allowed to be is if the expression 3 minus x itself is non-negative. And so if 3 minus x is non-negative, it's greater than or equal to 0, and therefore 3 is greater than or equal to x by adding x to both sides of that inequality. And therefore we could say root 3 minus x is only defined if x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, to continue our review here, we're going to take a look at something called mixed and entire radicals. Okay, uh, entire radicals entire radicals. Those are radicals without coefficients. That's where all the, the stuff is found inside the radical. Okay, mixed radicals. Mixed radicals are radicals with coefficients. Uh, these are also called simplified. Okay, for example, the square root of 50 is an entire radical. We can rewrite though this as a mixed radical, and here's how we do that. The square root of 50, well, I can break up 50 into two numerical factors, 25 times 2. Okay, and now there is a rule that's written up here. That tells us that you can take any radical with factors a and b, and you can break it into two separate radicals with radicand a and radicand b. So now in our example, square root of 25 times 2 is equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 2, well, that's just still the square root of 2. So as it turns out, the square root of 50 is exactly equal to 5 times the square root of 2. Here, the square root of 50 is entire, and here, the 5 times the square root of 2 is simplified or mixed. Okay, so here's some questions for you. We want to convert each of the following to mixed radicals. That is, we want to simplify each of the following. I'd like you to pause the video and try that for the first two on the page. Pause now. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, now let's consider how we can approach this. Uh, we have a square root of 200. 200 can be broken into two factors, 100 and 2. That gives me square root of 100 times the square root of 2, which is 10 times the square root of 2. 
Now, how did I come up with this square root of 100? Where, where does this come from? Or you could alternatively ask in our prior example, where does the square root of 25 come from? Why did I use 25? Well, the reason why I use the square root of 25 is because the square root of 25 gives me 5. 25 is a perfect square. Similarly, I can use 100 because 100 is a perfect square. And in fact, I know the square root of 100 is 10. It would be helpful to write down the perfect squares on the side. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and so on. It's helpful to know at least the first, say, 10 perfect squares. Alternatively for this question A, you may have broken it down in a different way. And I want to show you that if you did that, you're still going to arrive at the same answer. So let's say instead that you took the square root of 200 and you said, okay, 200 is divisible by 4. And you said, that's 4 times 50. Well, that's square root of 4 times square root of 50. And that's great. So now we can do the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 50. Okay, this is a different answer than we got in the other one. Oh, no. But wait. Remember the square root of 50 is something we just did above. The square root of 50 we had discovered earlier was 5 times the square root of 2. So in fact, what we now have by multiplying through is 10 root 2. We have the exact same result as we did above. This took more work in the second version. The first version is so much faster because we got the largest possible perfect square factor. 4 is a perfect square factor, but it's not the largest possible. Okay, for question B, square root of 75 can be broken down into square root of 25 times 3, which is root 25 times root 3, which is 5 root 3. Again, I use 25 because that is one of my perfect squares. Okay, continuing on the next page, uh, there are some more uh, radicals that we want to simplify, and I, I want to do the first one myself before I get you to do the rest. Um, oh, how do I simplify this? The cube root of b to the power of 10. Well, I'm going to show you two different techniques here for dealing with this. The first is that I can break this down again into perfect cubes, just like we broke down into perfect squares before. And b to the power of 10 can actually be broken down into b to the power of 9 times b to the power of 1. If we go further now with this, we get the cube root of b to the 9 times the cube root of b to the 1, which is just b. Well, why, why did I choose to do the cube root of b to the 9? Well, as it turns out, the cube root of b to the 9 is b to the power of 3. Because b to the power of 3 times itself, times itself again, if you cube b to the power of 3, you get b to the power of 9. And then for the, the rest here, we just have the cube root of b left over. So when we're dealing with a variable in the radicand, we simply can look to uh, an exponent of that variable that can be divided by the index of the radical. Okay. Another technique that you might choose to use is to rewrite this as a fractional exponent. This is the same thing as b to the power of 10 over 3 b to the power of 10 over 3, well, 10 thirds, on the side here, we'll write down that 10 thirds is equal to 3 and 1 third. Okay, so this is like b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 1 third, which is b to the power of 3, and then that b to the power of 1 third, we rewrite it in radical form. And guess what? We get the same result. Okay. 
I'd like you to try the other three questions and then pause the video now to do that and I'll write them down while you're pausing. Go now. Oh wait, hopefully you paused in time because here's the three answers. Uh, in this first case, uh, 48 y to the power of 5, I broke that into two factors. One is a perfect square, 16 y to the power of 4, and the other factor is 3y. Okay, so breaking this into two radicals, I can square root the first radical, that's 4y squared, and the second radical, well, we can do nothing with it, so we just recopy it as, three, as the root of 3y. If you chose instead of 16, if you chose to notice that there was a square root of 4, or a factor of 4 in there, that's nice, uh, but then you have to go further. Okay, and the second question, uh, I'm dealing with perfect cubes. Boy, it, it's nice to write down the perfect cubes. Those are 1, 8, 27, 64, uh, 125, uh, 216, and so on. That's 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed, and so on. Notice that 3 cubed is 27, and so I wrote down my perfect cube of 27 over there. I broke this into two radicals. That's cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of 2, nothing I can do with that, so I just rewrite it. In the last question, I found a perfect square, 9, n to the power of 6, and p to the power of 4. That is a perfect square factor. And 7n is just what's left over afterwards. If I square root that first radical, then that results, I get 3n cubed p squared. For the second radical, well, there's nothing I can do with it, so I leave it as root 7n. We can do this backwards as well. We can convert a mixed radical to an entire radical. In the first example, 7 times the square root of 3, how do we deal with this? Well, we want to rewrite it as two separate radicals. So root 3 is still root 3, but what about 7? 7 is equivalent to the square root of 7 squared, which is 49. I now have the square root of 49 times the square root of 3, which is equal to the square root of 49 times 3. To put them into a single radical, and now 3 times 49, oh, this is going to stretch my brain out a little bit, but I believe 3 times 49 gives me 147, and so we have the square root of 147 for our final answer. Okay, why don't you pause now and try the other three questions, and I'll write them down while you're, you've paused. Pause now. All right, so welcome back from the pause. Uh, here are the three answers. So first we have... Uh, 5 is identical to the square root of 25, and so now we have the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, and 25 times 2 gives me 50, so that'll give me the square root of 50. In the second case, a to the power of 2 is equivalent to the square root of a to the power of 4. Combining those two radicals together, we end up with the square root of a to the power of 5. What about in the last one? I finished it, so I thought I'd talk it through. Uh, the cube root of 3k squared is just the cube root of 3k squared. I just recopy that. What about 2k squared? If I cube this, I end up with 8k to the power of 6. k squared times k squared times k squared gives me k to the power of 6. The cube root of 8k to the power of 6 is identical to 2k squared. Okay, now I can just multiply this through. Uh, so I'll multiply the two radicands, and that gives me 24k to the power of 8. k to the power of 6 times k to the power of 2 is k to the power of 8. All right, and for our final question on this fairly long video is putting some numbers in order. So we want to put these five numbers in order. Well, that's really difficult to do, to say which one's larger than the other one without just using a calculator. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to try to rewrite all of these as an entire radical and see what we get. 4 times 13 to the power of a half is the same thing as 4 times the square root of 13, 
which is the same thing as root 16 times root 13, which is, oh, I got to type into my calculator here, 16 times 13, and I get the square root of 208. So the square root of 208 is equivalent to the first term. Why don't you do the other four here? So pause the video now and, and rewrite all four of those as a single radical and see what you get. Pause now. Okay, so there you go. I've gone and done that now. Uh, so here's what you get. 8 root 3 becomes square root of 192. 14 becomes square root of 196. That's just 14 squared. It gives me 196. Square root of 202 is just square root 202. And 10 root 2 is square root of 200. Now it's really easy to compare these, right? This is the smallest, square root of 192. So the lowest number is 8 root 3. The next lowest number is square root of 196. So that's 14. Oops, crossed out the wrong one. The next lowest one is 200. Uh, so root 200, so that's 10 root 2. Now the next lowest one is this square root 202 that I crossed out. And then I didn't give myself enough space. The last one is square root 208. So that's 4 times 13 to the power of 1 half. And so there we've written them all in order. All right, there's your homework here. Enjoy.